Hello booktube. Um, I thought today I would uh, change venues and do this outside here in the mountains of North Georgia. So um, it is gorgeous outside. It is 60 degrees Fahrenheit um, and in the, on this beautiful property uh, with these changing leaves and breeze, bird chimes or wind chimes, bird chimes, hummingbird feeders, bird chime or wind chimes. This is just a gorgeous day, so I thought I would do this out here today. We have started New Worlds November, and I wanted to uh, do a couple of book reviews today, or a couple of story reviews. I haven't read entire books. And if the um, if the coloring or the shading goes bad, sorry about that. The, the sun is mostly behind the clouds, but every now and then it peeks through, and then it changes the, it, it changes the way everything looks here. But... Um, I, I think you, you'll you forgive me that just to see these awesome trees out here in this lake right down there and the dahlias and all that. Just a beautiful place. But, yeah, I wanted to talk to you today about two stories I've finished so far. I'm, I'm working on a third. Um, so far I'm reading, uh, or so far I've read Twilight by John W. Campbell, published in 1934. Um, and it was originally in Astounding Magazine. So, a fairly early uh, Golden Age science fiction story by the editor of Astounding Magazine. I think he was editor at, in 1934, I'm not sure. But I know uh, he went by Don A. Stewart as an author at that time. Uh, but the funny thing about John W. Campbell is these days, I think it's sad, but to a lot of people... And even in the science fiction community, he's thought of as more of an editor because he edited, um, I believe it, was it Astounding? I can't remember. But he edited, uh, and, and then Analog Magazine for until the 60s, I believe. Um, 30 years, I think. Uh, I, I talked to, to um, Sean D. Stanfast about this, and I believe he said he was uh, editor until the 1960s. But yeah, he's mostly forgotten as a writer by by most people. Um, he's known more as an, as the editor, but he wrote uh, who goes there, which I read last year and loved every second of it. J just a great story. Uh, the movie, the thing, uh, from another world from the fifties. And I believe it's a thing from another world. And, uh, the thing from 1982, the John Carpenter movie, um, are both based on the story who goes there. Just a great story. Highly recommended. Um, and it takes place on Earth, so it would work for uh, week one ter uh, terrestrial for uh, New World's November. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this story, Twilight. Uh, it is about a man who, who uh, talks to a hitchhiker. Uh, his name is Jim Bendel, and the hitchhiker is Eris Sin Kenlin. And he tells the story of the earth in the year th uh, 3059 and what has happened on earth in 3059 so uh you know approximately a thousand years about 1100 years at the time this story came out and it tells the story of uh, men inventing machines to do everything every menial job every um Every job that men don't want. Every job that humans don't want. And um, and what this serves to do is it serves to take away the wonder and it serves to take away the curiosity of man. And it's another, like Steve Donahue was talking about, another story that is a cautionary tale of, of um, machines. You know, a cautionary tale of machines taking over Earth. You know, what happens when this happens? Well, men become extinct. Um, men, you know, but but it starts with losing, losing wonder and curiosity. Men become lazy. Um, even if they have the curiosity, they're too lazy to do anything about it. So, it, it again, a cautionary tale. And I find that interesting. These um, science fiction writers can write about machines in a really romantic way 
And then some science fiction writers, or even the same science fiction writers and other stories, talk about the machines taking over and the machines destroying man or man becoming too reliant on machines. Um, and, and I find that fascinating that, that they can look at it in both, in both ways, you know, the, the positives and the negatives of, uh, of technology. And this was a great story. Um, there, there, there is a moment of racism that most people, well, that a lot of people might have trouble with. But just remember, this story was written in 1934, about 1932. So, um, it has some silly points as well, um, as most stories of this time will. You know, when looked at, when looked through today's eyes, it'll be a little silly. Like they change the names of the of the cities and everything have been changed. Um, you know, they've been shortened. Uh, San Francisco becomes San Frisco. There, there was a, there were a couple others, and I don't know what that serves. I don't know what purpose that served in the story, except as a little bit of filler. Um, it, it just didn't make sense to me that part of the story. But the rest of the story was excellent, um, and I, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend it for New Worlds November. I got it out of uh, the Science Fiction Hall of Fame Volume One, but you can find this story in quite a few. Uh, quite a few places I'm sure um, if, if you're lucky enough to have the uh, that 1934 issue of Astounding Magazine well you can find it there but I don't think I would read it in that <laughs> those uh, those magazines will fall apart but yeah great story and I, I couldn't recommend it enough the second story I want to talk about uh, that I finished and I read it as a child and this is the first time I've read it since then I don't even think I was a teenager when I read it I think I was 11, 12 years old, because I remember certain parts of it, but I don't remember at all. And it was The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. And man, did I love that, that story. I loved it more this time than I did when I was a kid. But the part I remember most as a kid is the mini miniature time machine. Um, I had an illustrated edition of The Time Machine when I was uh, when I was younger. Uh, I don't I don't think it was a bridge. Now that I'm I'm reading it uh, again. I believe it was the full story. Um, it's interesting. Some of the things that I read when I was, you know, a kid, I'm surprised at, that that I understood it when I, you know, that I understood the language, that I understood everything that was happening. Um, but I did, and I, that really surprises me. But I couldn't help but think about when I was uh, reading this story about the movie that came out, the Time Machine movie that came out in the 90s, I believe, and the superfluous crap that they just threw, threw in that movie, I don't think it's a terrible movie, I think the movie is fine, I believe it's Guy Pierce that's in the movie, um, I think the movie is fine, but I also don't like what they did to a lot of the movie, um, giving the Time Traveler a name, I think it could have, could have given the movie a little more of a sense of wonder if you're if you're trying to figure out what this character's name is or or trying to understand why they didn't give him a name and and it, it was just little curiosities like that that were in the story that are not in the movie um you know the the love interest um all of that you know Weena in the in the book in the story is a is a childlike character who just becomes a like a friendly companion um to the time traveler and I I would like to see a version of the movie, and let me know if there is one. But I would like to see a version of the movie where it keeps those um, those aspects and doesn't change those aspects for the um, for Hollywood. You know, uh, sometimes I would like to see two versions of a movie. Like I said, the time the time machine movie is not terrible. It, it, it's a, it's fine for what it is. But it's not the same story. It is it is way different. Um, sure, it's the time machine. It has you know a lot of the same elements. But give give me this story over the movie. That's not always the case, but more often than not, it is. Um, but you know, I'm not going to review this thing. Sure, I recommend it. It's amazing. It's a great it's a great story. It's so much fun to read. Um, I don't know if I could say it's you know. A, it's not a perfectly written story. It has its issues. 
Um, and, and a lot of that is involved in the science. But of course, when this book was written, um, late 19th century, I believe, or early 20th century, I, I forgot to look up when this story was was written and, and uh, published. But yeah, um, I had a great time with it. And and that will, uh, you know, it will give you the dystopian uh, sub um, sub theme for New Worlds November. It will give you the time travel sub theme. Uh, it'll give you the far future sub theme. Um, so just that one story will do at least three. But but don't go in expecting that it's going to give you give you your uh, your romance or anything because it because it's not it's just not there. If you've watched the movie, and you've never read the story. Please do yourself a favor and read the story. It is it's very good. It's only seventy pages or so. I read it in the uh, Science Fiction Hall of Fame Volume Two Two A Science Fiction Vo Hall of Fame Volume Two A, um, and it's in there for a reason. It's one of the last stories in there. I wish I actually wish they would have done those stories in chronological order in uh, time of publishing, but they didn't do that, and I don't I don't know why. Um, but that's that's the one thing that I wish they would have done in that. But yeah, I just wanted to let you know about those stories and show you this beautiful area that we're staying in right now um and i don't know if you can hear the birds and stuff but, but there's they're still here for now they're not they're not going to be this thick too much longer they're going to be moving on but yeah this is uh this is a beautiful day and i'm loving new world's november and i hope you are too let, let us know what you're reading and um i hope you're having a great week happy science fiction reading